In 2005, Travis Oliphant changed the world because he invented NumPy, the amazing package that makes Python the best. <laughs> NumPy is Python's package that lets you create arrays. And to use it, all you have to do is import NumPy as NP. That's what everyone else does. And to create an array, you simply type np.array parentheses, and then you create lists of lists. So we'll do a list of one, two, three, a list of four, five, six, and we'll finish it off with a list of seven, eight, nine. Seven, you cannibal. The way these arrays are organized makes me so happy. Because you can access any element that you want inside of the array. Let's talk about indexing. The way this array is organized is bracket, row, comma, column. And you'll see what I mean. The first row is accessed as zero. The second row is one. And the third row, you might have guessed it, is two. So if we want an individual row, all we have to do is call that row's number. So A of zero is going to be one, two, three. A of one is going to be four, five, six. And A of two is gonna be seven, eight, nine. If you want a column, the first one is colon, comma, zero. The second one, colon, comma, one. And the third, colon, comma, two. Now, why do we need that colon? That's because, as we saw at the beginning, you enter the row first, so if you want the entire column, you do colon, comma, column number. Just like that, colon, comma, column number. The first column, colon, comma, zero, will be down the column, which is one, four, seven. The second column, be colon, comma, one, which is gonna be two, five, eight. And last, but definitely not least, colon comma two, which will be our three, six, nine. Now, of course, you don't have to just access an entire row or column at once. You can access the individual elements. Elements. So for example, across the diagonal, you want that first entry in the diagonal? It's gonna be row zero, column zero, so zero comma zero. The five in the diagonal, similarly, row one, column one, one comma one. And last, that nine, row two, column two, boom, nine. And of course, we can fill the rest of these in in a very similar fashion. And if you notice, going across the row with our row zero, the first entry in every element in the first row begins with a zero. And in the second row, they all begin with one. And in the third row, you guessed it, they all begin with two. Now down the columns, we see the same pattern. The second entry for those elements in the first column is zero. The second entry for those elements in the second column is one. And the second entry for those elements in the third column is two. And we can use this to access any tiny little element that we want. So for example, if we type in a zero comma zero, that's gonna give us our one. If we type in a of two comma one, that will be row two, column one, which is eight. And if you type in A of zero comma one, which is two, I think you're starting to catch on. Now let's talk about shape. As you can imagine, these arrays have a shape to them. Yeah, that's right, number of rows and columns. So to access the shape, it's really easy. All you need to do is type A dot shape, and it will give back a tuple of the number of columns, comma, number of rows. You can also do the exact same thing by doing NP dot shape of your array. We present to you today's broadcast. Grabbing whatever part of the array that you want. Now we've already touched on how you can grab individual rows, columns, or even elements inside the array. But what if you wanna grab a tiny part of a column, or the corner of the array, or the tiny matrix that's inside of your array? Well, array broadcasting is gonna be what helps you out. So the syntax is very similar to the indexing we were doing earlier, meaning that the row and column are still separated by a comma. To broadcast the specific parts that we want, we will have a start colon stop for both the row and the column. Now keep in mind, whatever you put as the index for stop does not actually include the stop. So it's always up to, but not including. I think an example will help you out. So here's our array A. 
and let's say we're not interested in all of A. We just want its money. I mean, we just want four and five, meaning those two elements right there. NumPy makes grabbing those effortless. So starting with the row, this begins at row one and ends before row two. Now over to the columns. This begins at column zero and ends before column two. So if we wanna get just that four or five, we simply type row one colon two column zero colon two. And by the way, you actually don't need to put that zero because NumPy assumes you're always starting from the beginning. So you can admit that and it will give you the exact same thing. Let's look at this in code. So a of one colon two comma zero colon two gives us an array of just four or five. And if we omit that zero, one colon two comma colon two, we equally get four, five. Let's jump into another example. Say this time you just want the corner four elements, or in other words, five, six, eight, and nine. Again, from the top, the row begins on row one and the row ends before row three. The column begins on column one and it ends before column three. To grab those four elements in the corner, we would do one colon three for the row and one colon three for the column. Now, just like NumPy assumes you start at the beginning, it assumes you end at the end. So you can actually omit the threes and just leave it with a colon, which basically means take from the starting point all the way through the end. Let's see this in code. So if we do a one colon three comma one colon three, we get our array of five, six, eight, nine. If we do the same thing, but omit the three, so just a of one colon comma one colon, we get the same thing. Now last, say you want this five, eight in the middle column. I'm actually not gonna tell you this one. Why? Because I want you to think about it. And if you're smart enough to do so, comment below and tell me if you figured out easily how to index and just grab the five, eight from our array A. Batman has a mask and NumPy has a mask too. Why? Because NumPy, like Batman, is a superhero. In all seriousness, masks are another way that you can grab specific elements from your array, but this time it's with numbers. So we've already talked about how you can grab any element by an index through broadcasting or indexing, but what if you wanna grab elements that fit a certain mathematical criteria? So if we look back at our array A and we just type in A greater than five, you'll see the exact same shape array, but with booleans as entries instead of number. And you can apply this array to your original array by putting the mass inside a bracket. So if we want just the elements of A that are greater than five, we type A brackets A greater than five. And of course that gives back a one dimensional array of six, seven, eight and nine. The creation. So quickly, I'm gonna talk about a few different simple ways that you can create arrays quickly. There's a bunch of built-in things that automatically help you create arrays in a very efficient and fast way. For example, if you want an array of zeros, you just type in np.zeros with a tuple of the size that you want. In this case, four comma five is a four by five array of zeros. You can do the same things with ones. np.ones, three comma two, boom, three by two array, full of one. If you want specific numbers on the diagonal with zeros everywhere else, you simply do np.diag with a list of numbers. It will create the appropriate shape for you. So a list of one, two, three will give us a three by three array with one, two, three on the diagonal. Let's say you don't really care what numbers you have in your array. Well, guess what? np.empty is what's for you. Just type in np.empty, give it a shape and boom you have an empty array, which in this case just claims it's zero. You want a random array for testing? np.random.random with a shape inside will give you a random array with numbers between zero and one. So here we did np.random.random of a four by two. And last, you want something that looks like the identity? np.i. 
and you can make that any shape you want as well. Sometimes you just want to combine a few different types of arrays together. So here's a couple of combining functions that Python has built in. First, we're going to create another array called B that's just zeros, and we're going to use our array A. First off, we're going to do an np.b stack. B stands for vertical. So what we're doing is vertically stacking in the vertical direction A and B. So that means the number of columns has to be the same or else you're gonna get an error. There's also H stack, which is, as you can imagine, horizontal stack. That means we're taking A and stacking B horizontally to it. And this won't work unless your number of rows is the same. And do you know how I remember that? HR, human resources. I don't know, it works for me. There's also a method called np.append. And you know what? It works almost the exact same. If you just stick in np.append of a, b, then you're just gonna get a flattened array of all of the elements of a and all of the elements of b. But you can specify an access. So if you do np.append of a comma b with access equals zero, you'll notice this actually works the same as np.vstack. And if you do np.append of a comma b with access equals one, now you're doing things on the rows and it's just like np.hstack. In fact, with almost every single numpy function, whenever there's an access keyword, access equals zero usually refers to the columns and access equals one usually refers to the row. Oh no, we've combined too many arrays and now we need to split them, split them. The opposite of combining is splitting and NumPy can do that as well. Just like we used np.vstack and np.hstack to stack different arrays together, you can use np.hsplit and np.vsplit to split arrays. hsplit is horizontal split, so it's gonna split down the columns to create different horizontal pieces. So that means the number of columns needs to be divided visible by the number of splits that you give it. And that's exactly how these split functions work. You give it the array and the number of splits you want to split it into. So if we do np.h split of a comma three, we're splitting the array into three different pieces. So now we have three columns. And similarly with np.v split, we do np.v split of a comma three, so we're cutting it on the rows. You may have looked at these arrays and thought, hmm, those are exactly like matrices from my linear algebra. Algebra class. That's because they are. Now I want to get into some linear algebra. NumPy can do mathematical things so fast. It's so fast. Matrices, arrays, tomatoes, tomatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Anything you would want to do mathematically with the matrix, you can use NumPy for. Let's say you just want to take the transpose. NP.transpose of A is how you would do that. Or equally, and a faster alternative, is a dot capital T. And just like you learned how to do matrix multiplication in your classroom, you can do matrix multiplication on NumPy. Just type np dot dot and put in the two arrays you want to multiply together. And remember, just like you learned in your math class, in order to multiply matrices together, the number of columns in the first matrix must line up with the number of rows in the second matrix. But there's a shortcut for multiplying matrices as well. Just do A and then the at symbol and then A and this will create the same multiplication. And by the way, if you ever want to do component-wise math with scalars, that works as well. Let's say you want five times A. You type five times A and boom, you get out a matrix array where every element is multiplied by five. You can also do division, divide by two, or a scalar of one half essentially. Or you can add, if you just add a single scalar to it, it will add component-wise. We can even run some statistics on our matrix A. Let's say we want the mean of all of the elements. We just type np.mean of our matrix A and it will spit out the mean, which in this case, of course, is five. But let's say we want the mean across a certain axis. If you remember, axis equals zero is down the columns and axis equals one usually refers to the rows. So if we want the mean down the column, all we do is specify np.mean of a where access is equal to zero and we'll get three numbers back one for every single column now we can do np.mean of a where access equals one for the mean across the rows similarly we can also do np.std sexually transmitted disease which oh oh it stands for standard deviation ah. but it works the same way you can give it the entire matrix a or you can specify axis equals zero for the columns or one for the rows. 
And when it comes to linear algebra, there's actually a whole sub-package called LinAl, which stands for linear algebra. And this has all kinds of linear algebra things in there. For example, if you want your eigenvectors and values, you type np.linal.eig, dot dot and that will give you an array of eigenvalues and the eigenvectors associated with those values. Let's say you want the QR decomposition. LinAl can do that too. NP.LinAlg.QR of A will give back two arrays, <clears throat> Q and R, for the QR decomposition of A. Let's talk about the singular value decomposition. If you've ever done that by hand, sometimes it can take a lot of work. But guess what? NumPy can do that in amount of work faster than a speeding bullet. You just type in NP.LinAlg.SVD and plug in your matrix A and out pops your U. Out pops your singular values, and out pops your V. Boom! So fast and incredible. So there you have it. This has been a beautiful full tutorial of how you can use NumPy. And guess what? With all of these things that we have learned together today, you have opened up the possibility to do literally almost anything. The SVD, for example, can be used in facial recognition algorithms. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know more helpful NumPy packages that can help expand your horizon and make things even easier, then check out this playlist I have all about different NumPy function tutorials specific for what you might be looking for. And please consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>